the obvious media bias against Israel. Now, there are really good organizations that monitor this, Canberra and Honest Reporting and others, but I just want to make an observation about what I saw this morning. I was reading uh, the New York Times, Chicago Tribune, and Wall Street Journal, and their reflections on the speech that Prime Minister Netanyahu gave before the joint session of Congress. Now, from my perspective, Netanyahu gave a brilliant speech, very forthright, and very generous offers to the Palestinians, demanding virtually nothing in return except for Abbas simply to say, I recognize a Jewish state. But how did these three giant newspapers report it? I don't expect much of the New York Times regarding Israel. Wall Street Journal, I expect more. All three basically said that Netanyahu was very hard line. He offered no concessions for peace. There were obstacles here, and uh, it'll make peace harder, not easier. What a crock, complete BS. And what a bias. Let's just look at the facts. First of all, what concessions have the Palestinians made towards peace? None. They continue to incite violence even among their kindergartners. Their summer camps are training terrorists. They just found out that they're paying the salaries of terrorists in Israeli jails. They honor suicide bombers by naming squares after them. Their maps don't include Israel. They uh, now are in league with the Al-Qaeda version of the Palestinians, Hamas. I mean, what else do you want? They've said nothing. All Netanyahu said, Abbas has to do is stand before his people and say, I accept the Jewish state. Netanyahu stood before his people and very difficult for a guy who's resisted it all his life and said, I accept the Palestinian state, which is going to require huge concessions from Israel. So name one concession the Palestinians have made to come closer to peace. None. Zero. They keep doing everything they can to incite their people to violence, to hate Israel, to hate Jews. Now they're in bed with Hamas. So the bias is so palpable, it's unbelievable. But let's look at what Netanyahu did say. First of all, he says there will be a Palestinian state. That is a huge concession, something Abbas was not willing to say about a Jewish state. So how come there's no reporting about that? Second of all, he said that once Israel is convinced the Palestinians really want peace, which I do not believe will ever happen because they don't, but let's just say some miracle occurs and they do, Netanyahu said there'll be generous concessions of land. So Israel is already just slightly bigger than Rhode Island. It could fit seven times in the state of Illinois and ten times in the state of Minnesota. It is a tiny little state. And to take that tiny little land and divide it into two, if we did what Obama originally said three days ago, when I'm reporting this, when he, when he blindsided Netanyahu in the Oval Office, Israel would be nine miles wide at the 67 lines. Nine miles. Nine miles wide. And even with that, Netanyahu is promising large sections of land in Judea and Samaria, in the, what they call the West Bank, uh, to offer a Palestinian state. How much more generous can you be? Now, what did he say that the papers particularly focused on? Refugees. Well, everybody in the world knows what Netanyahu said everybody knows, which is that it'll never happen. And it's completely unprecedented in human history. The 750,000 Jews expelled from Arab countries went to the Jewish state, not to any uh, of their lands of origin. And whatever Arabs left the land of Israel, they will be able to return to the land of Palestine once there's a land not to the Jewish state, which would end the Jewish state. The whole idea of Israel is to have a Jewish state. Number two, Jerusalem. It's the undivided capital of Israel. As Netanyahu said, and it's so empirically true, first of all, Jerusalem is mentioned nearly 700 times in the Hebrew Bible, never once in the Quran. And the only time in human history that there's been unfettered access to the holy sites of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism is when the Jews have had sovereignty. When the Muslims had sovereignty, before 67, they turned the synagogues of Jerusalem, old Jerusalem into horse stables. They destroyed them. Jews didn't have access to them. Never again will Jerusalem be undivided. And third, the 67 borders are simply indefensible. Israel would not survive with the, with the 67 borders, the 67 lines, and without a military presence on the Jordan to stop Iraq and Iran, some future onslaught of armies. And so it is so clear that the writers for these big newspapers, even the Wall Street Journal, 
and the New York Times, the Chicago Tribune, and I'm sure many, many others have a complete distorted view, to put it in a nice way, and to put it in a non-nice way, which is probably closer to the truth, a complete bias against the state of Israel and for the Palestinians, which have not done one thing to promote peace, and all they do is incite violence. It's tragic, but let them make a concession to peace. Let them simply say they accept the existence of this Jewish state, and then they can start talking. And besides that, even if you take everything I've said at face value, uh, don't, you, don't you negotiate in negotiations? Shalom.